one flying fortress. Late of Seattle, now visiting in the Pacific. Pretty, isn't it? It's been flying for 3,000 miles. Unfortunately, it's lost. It's this man's fault. His nerve is gone. Everything he's been taught has left him. got through to their objective. Had to fight off half a dozen planes besides. And now, they're lost on the way back. One weak link will snap the strongest chain. Too bad, for our side. That plane was worth $350,000. I don't know what amount you'd quote on the man you take for your life. Why did this man get this job? Isn't there an X-ray machine that can look into a man and say, He'll do. Yes, there is such an X-ray machine, and it looks into men's minds, and hearts, and souls, and finds them either adequate or wanting. It's called the Officer's Candidate School of the Army Air Force, and is situated at Miami Beach, Florida. Sustinio Alas stands for I Sustain the Weight. These men, and their minds, and their discipline, lies the hope that we will always keep them flying. How does a school test these men? How does it expose those that must not lead and teach those that can to lead? Where and how do we get those men? That's important enough to know. Here are 1,000 average enlisted men. They pass their physical tests and are asked 150 questions to determine their general knowledge. 480 men receive a grade of 110 or better. These are superior. These men must now, by evincing signs of leadership, rise to at least the rank of corporal. Should they, then, in the opinion of their commanding officers, show aptitudes and talents sought in the Army Air Forces, they will be recommended to an examining board. 29 men remain who may be chosen to enter officers' candidate school. The examining board interviews each man personally. 24 remain. Another physical test, fuller than the first, eliminates one more man. 23 remain of the original thousand, the cream of the crop. They're here with others and they're having a good time. Now, they don't know exactly what they're getting into, but uh, they've heard stories. This much they have been told. This school requires real courage to enter and represents real achievement to complete. Amen. Only three answers in this school. Yes, sir, no, sir, no excuse, sir. Get your GI haircut, wear regulation shoes. Get everything out of your pockets. Line up your shirt and belt buckle. Hide your laundry. That means handkerchiefs. And remove those stripes. He can't stand watching it. Pretty hard to get those stripes. A lot of strange fellows here. No author could invent their past experiences. Let's look at some of them. The man on the left is the National Intercollegiate High Jump Champion. On the right, he served with the American Volunteer Group in China under General Chenault. This is Elmer E. Meadows, once world's champion pole baller. He won the Olympic title in 1936 in Berlin. The man on the left was taken off Corregidor. The other one is a symphony conductor, D.R. Delano. Fifth cousin of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. On the left, a trapeze artist in Ringling Brothers Circus. On the right, the mayor of Glen Cove, Long Island. He's a former Austrian attorney. He spent quite a while in a German concentration camp. Never mind how he got out. He's an American citizen now. A gunner with the Royal Air Force. Next to him, a Broadway playwright. Gilbert Rowland of the Motion Pictures. He used to have a mustache. I know how you feel, mister. Both these men wear the Order of the Purple Heart. One got his for Pearl Harbor, the other for the Battle of Verdun. This is Robert Preston of the Motion Pictures. Left, came from Burma, member of the Flying Tigers. Right, catcher for the Detroit Tigers. He was cited for bravery at Pearl Harbor, saved a tanker. 
Left. First bombardier ever to touch Midway, Wake and Guam. Right. The AAU, light heavyweight champ. A lieutenant in the French Army, World War I. Survivor, Battle of Dunkirk. Left, all-American football player and member of the Green Bay Packers. On the right is a baritone in the Philadelphia Opera Company. William H. Jordan, bombardier in the Battle of Midway. Those medals are for sharpshooting in everything that comes out of a gun, any size. The fellow with glasses is an ecologist. He worked for the United States Department of Agriculture. For the last 14 years, he's done research on the sugar beet leafhopper. He knows more about the sugar beet leafhopper than anyone else in the whole world. The other fellow is the national high jump champion. Takes a lot of strange people to do strange jobs, and nothing stranger than a war. Still the same day they're being processed. Give your name. How old is your mother? When did you faint last? Look out, mister. Here it comes. Oh, you're a real estate agent, mister. You're looking around as if you want to buy the place. When you hit that bottom step, you come to a brace with your shoulders back, your stomach in, your feet at a 45 degree angle, and your hat straight. Jump. Oh, how old are you? Well, get 25 wrinkles under that chin. You got a girl? Two. Two more wrinkles for them. Oh, get that chest up in the air. Get it up. Way up. Get some wrinkles in that chin. More wrinkles. When I tell you to jump, I want you to jump this high. Jump! What did you come down for, mister? Wipe that smile off your face. Throw it on the ground. Step on it. Arms to the thrust. Boom! Double time. Harge! Halt! You're in it now, misters. For the next six weeks until you're upperclassmen, except for returning from mess, you move only at double time. West Point is not harder. Every minute of your waking time is accounted for and deliberately arranged so that you must hurry, hurry, hurry. You're allowed seven hours sleep. You'll be lucky and a very bright student if you can manage five. You're not privileged to eat or drink in any public place. You're not to step out of your room across the hall even to visit. Say, is this necessary? Well, maybe you're the kind of person who doesn't lend himself to this sort of discipline. You know it's necessary, but it's just not for you. You're too dignified. Or maybe you have your pride. Why, that's all right, mister. Just resign. Nothing will happen to you. You'll go back to your old rank. No one will hold it against you. Unless you hold it against yourself. But we want to find out now whether you who have been picked to command can learn to obey. The soldier who cannot stand up under strict regulations, discipline and restrictions, cannot discipline himself or others. This is where we must find out. Not here. Not when all these lives are involved. This is where you live, misters. Nicer than a tent. Maybe. No brass to polish in a tent. But then you've got a very reliable chambermaid. You, mister. No wrinkles in those beds and no dust in this room. Blanket tight enough to bounce a coin. Shoes laced, in line. Drawers staggered and open. Socks rolled, underwear folded, personal articles arranged according to student orders. Student orders. The Bible. Blanket will be four inches from pillow without a fold. Top sheet will be folded back over end of blanket four inches from pillow to make an eight inch fold with end of sheet folded under. Second blanket will be folded to size and width to length of pillow and in length to width of bed and placed under pillow centered on middle of bed. Clothes will be hung from the sides facing the center in the following order. Raincoats, overcoats, field jackets, fatigue clothes, coat, wool shirt and trousers, cotton shirt and trousers. All shirts will be buttoned, each and every button. What a generation of husbands coming up. No drop of water in bowl or tub after 10 a.m. All bright work polished, highly polished as prescribed by student order. Uh-oh, something. Who's the orderly this week? Shower curtain not fully extended. One demerit, gigged. For seven demerits, on your open post, the free time you will eventually get after three weeks, on your own Sunday, you walk one hour. I got that much. That's about average. You get pretty mad walking that, but you talk yourself out of it. I ask myself, how tough is this school compared to real fighting? I wasn't going to sleep in any foxhole. I wasn't going to eat emergency rations out of a can in my pack. 
And I had an answer for myself. Stop squawking, mister. Keep walking. Let's look at one day. An average day. It's 5.30 in the morning. Dark outside. Have to close the window before you snap the light on. Blackout. In exactly five minutes, if you're an underclassman, or ten if you're an upper, here is where you better be. An underclassman falls in this way. An upperclassman is allowed to fall in this way. As you can see, he leads the life of Riley. Oh! Riley had a short life. All present, sir? And one step later, and Junior would have been absent and gigged. Fifty demerits wash out an underclassman. Thirty-five, an upper. Uh-oh. A surprise visit from the Corps commander. Inspection. All men without garters will report themselves. And they do. This is the honor system. Your word is your bond. If you say you're wearing garters, no one lifts your pants leg. This is an elevator. And these are men who don't use it. Even if you live five flights up, double time, each way. Until 6.10, you brush your teeth and fix your room. And at exactly 6.10, you fall in for breakfast. How do you feel by now? Mad, huh? Why, they're singing. Pushed out of bed in the middle of the night, rushed up and down stairs, no breakfast, and they're singing. Funny thing is, they always pick sentimental songs in the morning. Well, the day's only starting. Maybe they won't be singing later. 7.55 in daylight, off to school. Can't tell you the number of men in the school, military secret, but this is only a part of the total. Spies in the audience can count the number of feet and divide by two. Here is the college campus. Four 45-minute classes between breakfast and the next time you eat. 33 courses in all, eight military, the rest academic. Here is the backbone of the school. This is not an endurance contest, but a concentrated educational course. And concentrated it is. Air and combat intelligence. Administration. Identification of aircraft. Mess management. Supply. Military law. And 27 more subjects. At West Point, many of these subjects in detail take a year of study. But we're at war now. Your standing in each subject is relative to the rest of the class. One hundredth from the top or one hundredth from the bottom. Below this line is unsatisfactory. If all these men are Einsteins, you better be smarter. Voice and command. Takes a lot of toughening to throw your voice a few hundred yards. Forward! Get that? Forward! Then the explosion. Explosion. Lose a lot of inhibitions this way. At 225, that's 1425 in army talk, calisthenics. You command yourself. Three times a week, you run a mile and a half. The other three times, the obstacle course. Rain or shine. Hit that dirt, misters. The average loss of weight per man is eight pounds. Waist, two inches. You'll find it on your chest. Today's retreat. It comes four times a week and lasts two hours. Here are the squadrons parade for a ribbon, just a ribbon. During the two hours, there is a little ceremony of standing at attention for 30 minutes. Have you ever tried that? Do you know how long 30 minutes are? You can move your toes to keep the circulation going. You can move your eyeballs to see the ceremony. But nothing else, misters. Nothing else. Because this man can spot a wiggler in a thousand men. 
stand there and let that ant climb down your collar. And let that foot go to sleep. And let that sweat roll down your nose. Watch the right of the screen. Watch it. There he goes. Nobody move. The men in the meat wagon will bring him to. Uh, I mean ambulance. Squadron 8 doesn't win any ribbon today. Sympathy for the fellow who fainted? Yes. Sympathy for him, too. If you haven't the stamina, this is the place to find it out. You should stand this long. Those officers stand for an hour and a half. There's no injury in this fainting. It's a momentary loss of consciousness due to lack of blood circulation. You uh, get a demerit for fainting. Better not faint again, mister. That's quite a band. Many famous orchestras are represented in there. In case you're not an expert, that's good marching. I don't know. I stood retreat a lot of times. And I'm not crazy about sweat running down my nose for 30 minutes. It was summer in Florida when I went through this, and every single time I got a lump in my throat. And so did the wise guys around me. Don't tell me they're not complaining now. Well, they're complaining, but I don't think they're going to desert. At 6.20, they're through with supper. Uh, except for lectures and training films, and a haircut once a week, and getting their laundry, why, uh, they have nothing to do but study. 11 o'clock, lights out. And a long day. But they're in soft beds, if they're in bed. Exams tomorrow, they feel a little shaky. The lucky one is in the tub with water. He'll change over with his friend in an hour. Many a man's been awakened by that 5.30 whistle, asleep in that tub. You've seen an average day. Looks hard. It is hard. You trade your school books for a rifle when it's your turn to stand guard. Do you know the penalty for this man's falling asleep at his post? 10 demerits? 20 demerits? It's death. Are you shocked? This is an American coastline. He's a soldier. This is war. There are Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish services. They're obligatory the first six weeks, yet the attendance the second six weeks is surprisingly high. It seems a man's moral values become clear to him in the armed forces. It was General MacArthur who said at Bataan, there are no atheists in foxholes. Singing sounds a little livelier today. Why, it's graduation. The commanding general of the school is there. And our guest speaker, General Arnold. He's flown down just to address the class and has to fly back to Washington. That's quite an honor. Stick your chest out, mister. Stick it out further. You've been through something. They crammed enough schooling in you to equal a year in college. They made you toe the line every minute of the day for 12 weeks. You used enough spit and polish to shine every fire engine in the state. They were teaching and testing you at the same time. And you made the grade. You came through. That's the Air Force's side of it. They got what they wanted. Now, what about you? What did you get out of it? Was it worth it for you personally? Well, you're a commissioned officer. A second lieutenant. All those non-coms are going to salute you now. And you're going to eat an officer's mess. You're an officer and a gentleman by act of Congress. Well, that's nice. But that's only trimming, icing on a cake. What really did you get out of this school? Mister, you got a 12-week education that all the money in the world couldn't buy. It doesn't exist anyplace else. You've got poise and confidence. 
You've got a respect and affection for your fellow man that'll remain with you forever. You're a leader now. You can handle responsibility. You're equipped for anything, mister. As a soldier, as a citizen, as a human being. What is a business executive but a leader of men in commercial life? You've got the groundwork to be what you want to make of yourself. Right now, you're a commissioned officer, the representative of the commander-in-chief of all our armed forces, the president of the United States himself. You've got a job to do. Nobody but you can do it. You wouldn't trust anybody else with it. Sustain those wings. Keep them flying. Keep them flying.